Hey, shalom, my kiam, shalom, call hello, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kaha Kudash. Let's send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I am out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. It's the brother Ariyala. I want to come back, and this is going to be uh, the next part of the uh, spiritual seed of greatness. And this next part of the spiritual seed of greatness is responsibility. You know, uh, responsibility is, uh, is definitely. You know, when we come into this truth, when we take on the um, the knowledge and commit to the ministry, we're taking on a huge responsibility. And every brother here in Great Millstone, Dallas, when they cross over into the camp, you know, we talk about, hey, it's different from being on the other side. You know, it's different from just watching from the comfort of your own home or, or just coming out to the highways and byways and just taking notes and listening. When you make the commitment to cross over into the camp, you're making a pledge with Yahweh Shah to go out there and confess this word and endure. And so I want to talk about four key components or mindsets towards responsibility. First, I just want to get into the etymology of the word uh, responsible. And when you look here, it says as an adjective, it, it means answerable to, to another or for something. And of course, we're answering to, the, to this calling, this vocation, all right, the, 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 this, uh, this duty. This profession, we're answering to it. Yahweh Shem Shah tapped us on our shoulder and told us this is what we're doing. And we're, we're responsible for it. That's why you, even when you read in the book of Luke, it talks about no Luke 9. It says no man put, you know, putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Right? So you have to be answerable to this thing. This thing becomes a chief priority. This thing of ours, as Apostle Bar says. Now, when you keep reading, it says response... Uh, Latin response, past participle, stem of respondere, respond, answer to promise in return from re, meaning back, and spondere to pledge. So you're going back to your pledge, right? It says accountable for one, meaning accountable for one's actions, right? Reliable, trustworthy. And we have to think about that as we self-critique ourselves in this ministry. Are we going back to the pledge which our forefathers made to Yahweh Shem Yahushua, that pledge that we read about in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, where it says, hey, if you keep these things, if you're obedient to these things, all of this is going to come, right? And so now, as in this ministry, we're coming back and we're setting up that pledge with Yahweh Shem Yahushua. So there's four things, if you're taking notes, brothers that are taking notes, four things we want to talk about on this one. The law of responsibility in the book Seed of Greatness, he talks about the law of cause and effect, right? The law of cause and effect. We understand that we become what we do. We reap what we sow. So that's number one. You reap what you sow or you become what you do. You become what you focus on. We all have daily lives and things that's going on, but are you sowing Enough to reap up righteousness and immortality with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Are you mindful of that? What is your focus on? Are you keeping your eyes single on that? We want to talk about that real quick. Number two, if you're writing this down, number two, your level of contribution will determine your level of reward. Your level of contribution will determine your level of reward. Are you making sure that you're that, that you're working within that type of level of responsibility? Number three, you have to learn to live with uncertainty. When you're accountable, when you're trustworthy, when you are when you're pledged to do something, when you make sure that you're responsible to do something, you do not let uncertainty or uh, I don't know what's going to happen next throw you off your task. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And the fourth thing that we want to talk about is a responsible person learns to delay immediate gratification. A responsible person learns to delay immediate gratification. Okay, so those are the four things that we're going to talk about. If you're taking notes, let's start back at number one, which is the law of cause and effect or reaping what you sow or you become what you First scripture I want to talk about is one that we always pull here in Matthew 6 and 22. It says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. 
right? But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light uh, that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the Most High and Mammon, meaning you cannot have a, a separated intentionality, intention in, in this thing. What you focus on is what you become. It doesn't matter whatever it is. It could be a basketball player. It could be a video game player. It could be, you know, a, a, a truck driver. It could be, you know, a cryptocurrency trader. You know, that's hot right now. You become what you do, and you're going to reap up. You're going you're gonna to reap what you continuously focus to sow into. So we have to be mindful of making sure that our chief, chief priority is sowing spiritual things so that we reap up a harvest of spiritual things. You got to put that at the forefront of whatever you intend to do. In the book of Job, the fourth chapter, in the um, eighth verse, it says, Even as, as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness, Reap the same. Okay? By the blast of the Most High, they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils, they are consumed. All right? So if we reap in wickedness, if we going off, or we're not paying attention to what Yahweh wants, if we're fully uh, dedicating our minds to sowing disobedience, we're going to reap up what? Death and worms. We want to make sure that we're sowing fruits of the Spirit, those type of seeds. So that when the Lord returns, we can bear up those things. Skipping over to the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12, it says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Right? So that's what we need to do. It's time for us to turn away from wickedness. It's time for us to turn away from the ways that the world has been pouring into us turn away from the uh, from the wiles of this flesh and begin to intently and intention intentionally sow righteousness so that we can reap up an immortal harvest with the lord that glory that's what we're all fighting for a responsible person is making sure that they're doing that they're focused on that because you're going to be checked with the type of fruit that you produce the type of fruit that you're focused on putting you know, in, into the ground. It's those type of seeds. Okay? So we was in Matthew 6. We're going to skip over to Matthew 12. And what it says here, it says in Matthew 12 and 33, it says, either make the tree good, uh, it says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. All right? And so, you know what, let's, let's skip up. Mm. No, actually, that's it. Yeah. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Whatever you focus on, you speak to. Right? It says, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of bringing forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. All right? For thy word shall, uh, shall thou be justified, and by thy word shall be, uh, thou shalt be condemned. Why? Because thoughts mean things. Thoughts are things. And our words convey the thoughts that's in our heart, in it, which, which displays the character of a man. So or if, you're responsible, if you're being responsible, you're going to be responsible for what you're producing out of your mouth. And, and, and generally what's coming out of your mouth is going to come out of, of what you're focused on and what you're intent about. Okay? And so, you know, that's what we have to watch. That's what we have to watch out for. That's what we have to be mindful for. Okay? We're going to be known by our fruit, the fruit of our lips, the fruit of our deeds. Right now, first Corinthians chapter three talks about the actual work that's going in. First Corinthians three and nine says, for we are laborers together with the most high. Ye are the most high's husbandry. We are the most high's building. Right. And this goes into cause and effect. All right. We're laborers. 
were laborers in this thing. It says, according to the grace of the Most High, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, have I laid the foundation and another build it thereon, but let every man take heed how he build it. You're going to reap what you sow. For, uh, for, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, tribulation, right? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man, if any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire, right? So we have to be mindful of this. We have to be mindful that, okay, we need to make sure that we're continuously building in this thing, continuously sowing in this thing. So whenever whatever happens, we can come through on the other side with a righteous reward. Or a, a reward of a winner. I know that's what everybody wants, that's what everybody intends. Okay? So we have to remain mindful of that. We have to remain remain mindful of keeping that keeping that heart of things okay now i want to go to the next point which is your level of contribution will determine your reward right that's what it that's what is going to happen now when you read here in first thessalonians 1 and 3 it says remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope of our lord yahweh Hamashiach, and the sight of the most high and our father all right knowing brethren beloved your election of the most high okay so the Most High is not going to forget our labor of love. Whatever we contribute in this thing in truth and sincerity, if we endure into the end, there is a reward on the other side for us. And that's that's a powerful thing. So we have to make sure we're chasing this thing with intention. Okay? Ecclesiastes 9 and 1 says, For all this I consider in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and the works are in the hands of the Most High. No man knoweth their love nor hatred by all that is set before them. Okay? Let me see. What point was it that I want to make? Verse 10 is really what I want. Verse 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So, Whatever the Most High has given you a gift to do or put the purpose in your heart to do, do it with all your might, man. The scriptures talk about in Baruch how we're supposed to seek the Most High ten times more. Your level of contribution is going to determine the level of your reward through this thing. We have to be mindful of that to constantly endure, to constantly endure, constantly endure. And that was one of the questions that the Apostle uh, um, Peter asked. And we always read this because, you know, this is one of my favorite scriptures in, in Matthew, the 19th chapter. 27 verse it says then answered peter and, and said unto him behold we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have therefore and yahweh shall said unto them verily i say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of israel and every one that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Your level of contribution is going to determine the level of your reward, man. You 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 going you know you you put down a whole bunch into the pot, you store up a lot of you store up a lot of treasure, you're going to get a lot you're going to bear a lot of interest on that investment. So we're we're making a spiritual investment here. And the most high is faithful, man. He's going to pay out. You best to believe that. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 says, For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when the Most High may a promise to Abraham because he could swear it by no greater. He swore by himself. The Most High swore by himself, saying, "Surely blessings, 
Blessing will I bless thee, and multiplying will I multiply thee. We was talking about how how bold Abraham was to be able to go and to be willing to sacrifice Isaac. Why? He trusted in Yahweh. He trusted in the Most High. He knew that the Most High would take care of the situation. Even if he did end up killing Isaac, that the Most High had the power to bring him back. But the Most High swore on himself. That's a sure thing. That's a sure bet. Right? Verse 15 says, And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise, for men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein the Most High willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. It's in, you can't mute it out. You cannot take it away. It's immutable. He confirmed it by oath. He confirmed it by an oath unto himself that, hey, I am going to give you these promises. You're going to, you best believe that. So you have to work with that faith. Someone who's who's taking on this ministry and is accountable and who's who's trusting in this thing, who's trustworthy to build to build this temple, is gonna work with that level of faith, knowing that man, the more I put in, the more I get out. The more I keep going, the more I have to reap on the other side. This is this is this is fantastic. This is the deal of a lifetime. You have to understand that. And so even though Abraham was 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 going through something like uh, sacrificing Isaac or going into a, a sojourn in a strange land, all types of stuff, because he had that faith, because he understood the Most High was faithful to reward within that promise, he was willing to grind. And that leads into the next point. That leads into the next point of because you've taken on that responsibility and you know your level of contribution is going to lead to how much you get in on the back end, you're willing to go into uncertain times and uncertain situations. Your faith is going to carry you through any type of, you know, doubtful or dark moment that you're uncertain about. You'll walk right into it because you have that level of faith, right? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one says, for we know that if our earthly house of, the, of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's not seen. That's something that you have to have faith in that is there for you, right? For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would... Uh, be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mort mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now, he that have wrought us for the same self thing is the Most High, who also have given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Right? Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk, we're willing to go into times of tribulation, people hating on us, certain death, uh, you know, people want to uh, cast us out, our family not uh, loving us no more potentially losing your job, all these things, these uncertain things can happen because you take on this role of being a minister of the Most High. But understanding our responsibility, we just keep rolling with it. We just keep rolling. We just keep going, man. Okay? We don't allow that to shake us. We don't allow that to keep us from doing what we need to do. Now, I want to uh, go here real quick and hit this word, the earnest of the spirit that we're our bond. Strong's G seven twenty eight Arabon Arabon. All right, Arabon. When you go into it, it says money which in purchases is given as a pledge or down payment that the full amount will subsequently be paid. Right? So the Most High 
says, so the scripture says, now he that have brought us for the self same thing is the most high who have also given us the earnest of the spirit. So we've been getting a, 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 a spiritual down payment to get through these uncertain times, to fight through the, to, to fight through this. That we so so that we know in, in the end when we when we culminate the fullness of everything is going to be taken care of, man. So that's that takes you walking by faith. That takes you walking in uncertainty, in a stimulus of uncertainty. But what fills the gap is our faith, right? Because the Most High is not unfaithful. All right, He's not going to forget our labor of love, and knowing that. We're willing to go into uncertain times, right? Famous scripture, right? Psalms 23 and 1. Who, man, who was in the more uncertain times than King David? Surrounded by enemies. Surrounded by those uh, people uh, that wanted to kill him. Constantly at war, right? Psalms 23 and 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me, he leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's that oath again, right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right? So it says, although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Right? So knowing with that trust, with that, with that taking on the responsibility of fighting and enduring to the end to produce the kingdom of heaven, you're taking on this ministry of confession, Right? You're willing to go into the valley of shadow of death because you know the Most High is with us. We know He's with, we know He's with you. So you take on that that responsibility. Even you know building anything is going to take be to be willing to go into uncertainty. If you start up a a business of some sort, you don't know if it's going to be profitable. You hope that it's going to be profitable, but because you trust in the work that you're going to do, you trust in what. Uh, uh, the the business plan, the model that you, that that you uh, laid out, you you boldly go with confidence that hey man this is gonna work out. How much more so the business plan that's written out here in the scriptures. You gotta that's belief. Belief is saying I you see the plan that the Most High has written out. You say man this this is this is gonna work, and you go to do the work. That's it. You know, this is the business plan. Okay? So number four. Let's go to number four. Number four is, well, you know what? I want to touch on one more, uh, a couple more scriptures concerning, you know, just be, just toiling and working in that, in just that mindset, right? James chapter five. James chapter five. Verse. 7 says, be patient, therefore, brethren. And this kind of, this does lean into number four, too. This kind of a blend of, of multiple things. Because this does talk about the no, the fourth point, which is you have to be willing to delay immediate gratification or the flesh or impulse, right? Carnal impulse. Someone that's responsible, if you become responsible in this thing, you get to a point to where you just put off certain things and you just focus on the truth. You focus on the long, you know, the long game, the end goal. What's going to actually produce for you what you want in the end? There's a point to where you just got to grow up, right? You got to put off childish things. James five and seven says, "Be patient, therefore, brother, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth." And have long patience for it until he receiveth the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. 
Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, and that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither uh, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by uh, the earth, neither by other oath. But let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. All right. So you made your mindset that you're going to focus on this thing and work and be within the ministry. Just continue to fight and continue to endure until the end. Continue to maintain that patience. This goes into reaping what you sow. You got to allow, you got to sow for the most high. You know, he's going to, he's going to, if you continue to sow, bro, the most high is going to give back abundantly. Okay, he's going to give back. You cannot outgive the Heavenly Father. So the more you sow, the more exponential return you can expect to give in due season, in due time. Okay? You got to just keep grinding it out. All right? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Be not deceived, the Most High is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life, life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay? We shall reap if we faint not. That means enduring until the end. That means delaying your gratification of the flesh on this side. That means waiting, patience, suffering, putting off. Okay? You got to maintain that mindset. You have to maintain that mindset. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of the Most High, ye might receive the promise. For yet a, li a little while, and he that shall come will come. And will not tarry. Okay? Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall not have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Right? So we're maintaining our legacy mindset to endure until the end. We understand that the Most High eventually is going to pay out. Why? Because he made an oath. He put it on his own name that it was going to produce. Right, so you gotta put off things of, 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 of you know, man, this is a good one too. Whew. Um, you have you have to put off the ways of this world, and, and wait for those for the fruit of the glory of the Most High to come, come to fruition. Second Timothy two, and nineteen says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Most High standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Hamashiach depart from iniquity. Put away these things, right? But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor and some of dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, Charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So you have to you have to put out that and put away those impulsive, impatient, childish, kind of knee-jerk reactions in the flesh. And you have to put on the mindset of faith, charity, peace, the fruits of the spirit, and continue in them. That's the responsible thing to do on the side. That will show to the most high that you are a trustworthy vessel. Right? That's what we want. That's the mindset that we must maintain. We got to continue to do that. Okay? There's some other scriptures that I have, but I think that really kind of rounds up what I wanted to really talk about as far as responsibility goes. Just those key concepts. The key concept of we, you, you become what you focus on, number one. Your level of contribution is going to determine your level of your reward. 
All right. You have to learn to live in uncertainty. You have to be able to be able, you have to be willing to go through something that tribulation. That's a that's a part of it. That's suffering. You got to bear your cross. All right. There's going to be times where you don't know if you, you know the, the the outcome, but you have to trust in the game plan. Right. And then you got to be willing to put off things for now and focus on the main thing. You got to be be willing to put away or delay immediate gratification. You delay the good for the great. You delay the tainted for the immortal. Okay? Call all Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rukha HaKadash. I want to send double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutation to y'all. I'm out there pushing the word and sincerity and truth. Shalom, man. Keep pushing. Let's go.